Uh, my name is Brian. A little bit about me. I'm from uh, the U.S. originally, from Colorado. I was born and raised there in a town called Boulder. And uh, so right next to the Rocky Mountains, I'm into all the mountain stuff, so climbing, biking, kayaking, all that good stuff. And I was lucky enough to have a school open up in town when I was just a little kid. So I've been doing jiu-jitsu now for almost 20 years, um, which makes me feel old at this point. But uh, I did my bachelor's. Didn't want to do anything with that afterwards for a few years. I just traveled around, did jiu-jitsu, teaching seminars, competing around the world. And then uh, decided I wanted to get into solar energy, so did my master's in the Netherlands. And now I'm doing my uh, PhD in Switzerland on new solar cell materials. So if anybody wants to geek out with physics or math, come talk to me. Uh, so today we're going to be doing butterfly guard sweeps. I did assume a little bit of background, so I assume you at least know kind of the basic butterfly sweeps in all four directions to the sides, uh, forward and backwards. If you don't, you're welcome to stick around and watch a little bit and maybe uh, pair up together if it feels a little overwhelming. I'll try to come around and get you guys as well. But it might feel a little bit fast if you don't have uh, that much of a background in butterfly. Yeah. Mm, it's definitely a gi class day. You, you, we can make some adaptions if you want, but yeah, it's, it's uh, tailored for the gi. So just by a show of hands, who plays Butterfly Guard every once in a while? Maybe not your main game, but you're comfortable. Kind of put those hands up higher so I can see. Okay, cool. Uh, is everybody warm? Or yes, no? Kind of? Okay. Uh, let's do this. We're going to start off just to get going, make sure our knees are warm and uh, our backs are warm. Just grab a partner real quick. We'll do like just three or four minutes, just starting to drill your but the butterfly sweeps that you already know, kind of getting into the motion of it. <laughs> Charles, can I borrow you? This is Charles, if you don't know him. He just beat me up for about 45 minutes. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> just kind of come forward. Sure. Me. When we're playing butterfly guard, I'm always in this loaded position. And you can see my knees are quite stacked here. So it's really important that we're doing butterfly guard. Our hips and our knees are loose. Otherwise, I might get this sort of torsion going on, and you can pop your knee or your hip. So if you do have bad knees or hips, make sure you're being careful with that. So let's spend, uh, yeah, let's go till uh, 510, just warming up with your partners, getting those hip, hips and knees going, kind of reviewing our sweeps, yeah? All right, three, two, one. Get to it. When you're a white belt, you're learning how to move your own body, right? When you're a blue belt, you're learning how to move with another person. Finally, when you're a purple belt, then you can start to like start linking techniques and putting a game together. Okay? And the big difference between like a blue, purple, and brown belt is the amount of options that you have. Okay? So as a white belt, I maybe know one thing from every position, right? Like five or ten moves, something from the bottom of every position, something from the top of every position. When I'm a blue belt, maybe I get two moves from every position. So now, now I'm up to a whopping 20 moves, right? Purple belt, you see a really steep increase in the number of moves because you start being able to link things together and creating a, it's called chunking, moves out of moves, so combinations, putting your movements together to create a game, okay? And the key with having more options is no matter what your partner's reaction is, you have an answer for it, right? So I'm very lazy. I hate doing work. Um, so I'm not a very aggressive fighter. I'm a reactionary fighter. So I do something, I let my partner react, and then I make him overreact. Okay? So that's, what, that's kind of the philosophy we're going to be going over today. But to do that, it doesn't matter what my partner's reaction is, I need to have an answer for it. Okay? So real quick, we're going to go over three basic ones, which is going to be forward, left, and right. And then we're going to focus on the core, which is going to be going over the back. So we're going to do all three at once because I think most people know this. So we're starting our butterflies See on your butt. So my partner's being very defensive. Maybe he's uh, putting his hands on me and we're kind of in a battle here just sitting. Right? My first option to go backwards is my hand is going to go to the lapel. I'm going to go elbow in so I'm creating a frame. If you guys do judo, it's the same uh, frame that we have in judo. So kind of lifting elbows in, almost like I'm doing an uppercut here, planting, and now I'm going to do our grappling sit-up, hips in, 
to just drive my partner backwards. So again, we're just fighting here. Whenever I'm in my butterfly position, my chest is always in front of my hips. If my shoulders are back, he can push me to the mat, okay? So butterfly position, hips are in front. Grab the lapel, elbow in, uppercut, pushing straight back, okay? Any questions on this? Pretty simple, yeah? This is just a, a recognition thing. I'm looking for my partner to be tall and just making him go that way. Left and right are exactly the same. So I start with my butterfly hooks. The traditional one is my partner comes into me a little bit and I get an underhook here. My free hand is cupping my partner's arm and pulling it behind me. So my elbow is tucking behind my back. Now I go straight to my shoulder, elevate on the hook, sit through to my side control. We'll go the other way so you can see the other side. So we're fighting butterfly. I go hum in, palm away, grab the arm, tuck it under. It's really important that my elbow here is pulling back. So I'm already pulling my partner to the side. Elevate onto my shoulder, sitting through to side control. Is everybody familiar with these two movements? Yes? All right. So let's just spend about five minutes just with those two, forward, and then that was left and right, just depending on which arm I pummel under, right? About five minutes, just review that. Cool. Three, two, one. Common mistake I'm seeing. When I pummel, if my palm is towards my partner's back, so I'm hugging him, right? If we're in butterfly and this arm is pummeled, I'm going this direction, yes? Look, if my elbow is down, my partner is able to sit on this side, and now I can't go that direction. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hand in the pummel and I'm gonna go palm away. See how it naturally elevates my elbow? Now it's easy for me to go this direction. This holds any time you're in a pummel. So even if we're standing, if we have a pummel, it's palm away, because look, whoop, I can steer my partner easily. If I'm in half guard or side control, whenever I'm pummeling, it's always palm away, because it elevates this elbow naturally. Yeah? All right, let's go about two more minutes, make that adjustment, and then we'll get into the, the core of it. So just a quick review, we're gonna forget about this in one second, but just so it's kind of in the back of your head, when I'm going to the side, everything needs to be going that, to that side, which means that this arm is pulling him to that side, and this arm is pushing him to that side. Okay, so I'm like a truck driver making a nice big steering wheel. Boom. Okay, now we're going to completely forget about that. Okay, so uh, this is how I used to play butterfly guard, kind of the forward and then to the sides. Um, and when you get guys who have really mobile hips or who have really good floating balance, it becomes very difficult to get them over because it requires so much elevation to flip their hips to the mat. <clears throat> it just becomes a battle and you wear your legs out really easily. So uh, there's a black belt from Poland named Adam Barczynski, if anybody knows him, he's amazing. Uh, so this is largely based off of his game with just some adaptions that I've added in. Um, but if you, if you like this game and you're more interested in it, uh, you can YouTube him and there's just amazing video of him getting all these, uh, this whole style of butterfly guard on like Leandro Lowe and top guys in the world. So definitely check that out. All right, so what I'm after with this sort of game is I wanna go sleeve and belt if possible, all the way behind his back, okay? This is very powerful because now I can switch here I can switch to the other side. I can go straight back. There's a lot of options, especially with this belt grip. I'm very strong because now we can't posture up and I can pull really hard into myself, but we have to get there. So from the start, <laughs> I always like to go uh, same side collar first. Remember I said I'm a reactionary fighter. What this gives me is this backward push. What's his reaction? Push back in. Oh, he dives right into it. Okay? Now, when I'm doing my reactionary fighting, when I'm trying to make my partner react, it can't be this. That doesn't do anything. Right? I'm really going for this, and now he's really pushing back in, and he falls right into it. Okay? So really start to get that into your drilling now. It's not a little 
soft movement. Like I'm really pushing, I wait for him to react, and then I get into it, okay? <laughs> I'm in my butterfly, push, he drives, grab the belt. The first thing we're gonna do is just transfer right to his arm, the same pull that we just did, and come over the top. Now sometimes I can go straight to mount, sometimes I just kick back. You notice he has a deep pummel on me, which is no good. The arm that's underneath needs to be pulling hard into my hip to keep him flat on the mat. The arm that he's under needs to come back to his hip, trapping his arm. And now I can start to switch into a nice heavy side pull. So once more, I have my same side grip. I push forwards, he pushes back. I get the belt right to the uh, tricep, pull hard on the elbow, right over the top. If I can, I go to mount. Otherwise, I kick through, I pull up hard on the elbow, I sink back on his elbow to get a nice tight side control. Questions? Cool, three, two, one. How did everybody feel? So you can feel, this is just a straight adaptation of going from our underhook to the side. Now instead of underhook, we're just going over the back, okay? And we're just gonna make these small progressive changes throughout. So, <laughs> it's amazing. If I can get this push and he falls in, and I can go right over the back first time, oof, I love it. Usually that doesn't happen, right? He never gives me my first option. So, I give a little bit of a push stiff, now when I try to go in, maybe it doesn't work, he doesn't fall in as hard and he stays a little bit more defensive here. All I'm gonna do is grab sleeve and cross collar, okay? Now, when I'm doing these sweeps, I'm always trying to go to my open side first, okay? So once I get this, this position, I can just start to pull into the same exact sweep here. Boom, arm goes across. I can come into my cradle position. So I give a little push. He stays a little bit more defensive. I can't come over the back. One, two, cross collar, same side sleeve. Pull, pull, elevate, come through. Once I have this position, I love pushing across and coming to the cradle. Right now we have all of our back takes and whatever you guys want. <laughs> Any questions on this? When you're starting that initial push, do mm -hmm. you find a slight angle or are you kind of dead straight? Mm -hmm. to kind of, yeah, that has the range to get over that. I always want to be on an angle, especially in this position. My partner, like if you look at his musculature, everything is pushing, boom, straight back into me. So for me to try to push him straight back, he's stronger than me here. But he has nothing over there. That's where I'm pushing. I'm always looking for these open areas in his base. I never want to go against his power. Like I said, I'm lazy and I'm not that strong. Any other questions? All right, cool, so real quick. He's a little bit more defensive this time. I don't feel like I can go over the back. One, two, pull. All the way over. Three, two, one. We're gonna die. Everything in this movement is a pull. It's never a push, right? If I'm pulling here and then I start to push with this arm, I'm working against myself because now I'm pulling here and pushing here and I'm working against. I'm just making his arm tight, but I'm not making him go anywhere. Everything's a pull. See? So one thing to help is as I do my pull, I'm not going to look at him, but I'm going to look to where I want to go, which is around my open shoulder. Okay? So he's being a little bit defensive. I grab one, two, and I look. Make sense? Just a couple more minutes on this. Three, two, one. So, <clears throat> the beautiful thing is he's being defensive. I give this pull to go for the sweep. What happens to his body? It drops, right? Ooh, there's my belt grab again. Grab the tricep right into my sweep. So now I have push in, he pushes back, he falls into it, I go to my sweep, I push, he's being a little bit more defensive, one, two, pull, over, switch. Everybody see the transition? 
real quick, we're just gonna combine those two now. Once you do it a few times, partner's on top, you can start to put a little bit of resistance in, okay? So make your partner choose. Either, <coughs> come down a little. Either I'm gonna drive, he's not gonna do much, he's gonna be a little bit defensive. I switch, pull, transition. Or I drive, he pushes back in, I let him fall into the sweep, okay? So give it a few tries just to get, just to get used to it. And then partners on top start to add that choice in, yeah? Three, two, one. So I just want to address one thing. Uh, I wasn't planning on addressing this, but it seems to be happening uh, fairly common. So, <clears throat> uh, let's actually face this direction. So what's happening is I'm starting to pull through, and instead of my partner going to my open side, he's coming to my closed side here, which could be a problem for me if he lets my inside knee slip through, he can pass, okay? So the main thing is I have my open side and my closed side. My closed knee needs to stay outside of his hip. So I need to have good hip flexibility here to maintain that position. My shin is acting as a shield so his hips can't circle around. But let's say I do the pull and his hip, head comes to the outside anyways. Right here I can just transition right into a, a nice tight guillotine or I can pass the arm through and come out to the back. Okay, so once more, I pull, his head goes to my closed side. First option, if my hand is free, I can circle over and come to my guillotine, or I can pass it around and come back in for the guillotine. So those are my guillotine options. Or if I feel like this hand is free, I can punch it through, come to the belt, and circle out to the back. Make sense on those two? Let's give that a round uh, for five minutes. Cool. Three, two, one. So we only have about five minutes left. Um, we didn't get to the full technique, so I just want to show you what that looks like so you have kind of a, uh, an idea of it in your head. Um, and like I said, if, if, you, if you like this game, this is all Adam Bardzinski, so check him out on YouTube. And uh, BJJ Scout has a great uh, tutorial of all, all these techniques. So, <clears throat> we really stayed kind of going to the sides today. The next progression is starting to go more into a back roll, forcing him to go into a, a, into a front roll. Because when I start to do these moves, we're starting from the knees, I get the pull, I get the back, and then as I start to sweep, his reaction is usually going to be to stand up here, right? And I kind of get free in my hips, or in his hips, so my legs don't have as much tension as I'd like. So what I start to do here is I just start to break out his base so I can pull on the elbow, I can pull or push on the hand, and now I start to go straight over my shoulder as a back roll, and I land nice and tight. And down. The nice thing with this is once I get his hips elevated, it doesn't matter if he floats his hips one way or the other, I just follow and go over that shoulder. So this time, he stayed a little bit to my left, I went over to my left shoulder, if I start to float his hips, and you can see his hips are off to the right, I can do the same thing off to the right shoulder as well. And what this is really nice with is it eliminates that hip floating game. So if you guys watch Marcelo Garcia, who is the master of butterfly guard, his hips are amazing on top. Uh, you know, like this. Yeah. So if you do this against Marcelo, Right, I go and he just whoop, keeps his hips flat and smashes my leg. The nice thing with adjusting to more of a back roll, especially with this belt grip, is now he starts to do the same thing and he can't. Because I have such good control and elevation over his hips. So just so you have an idea of where we're going, but I think you guys had enough technique for today, yeah? Um, so just a, a real quick review of what we did. So we started off, we can go backwards with our punch. We can push, he pushes back in, I let him fall through into my sweep. He's a little bit more defensive, I go cross collar sleeve. I can pull into my sweep. I can pull and transition here. Or I can pull, his head goes to the wrong side, 
And now I have my guillotine, I have my punch through to the back. Any questions on those? Awesome. What is the like, best defensive posture to give yourself once you've got your feet in, you've got some diverse, what's the best move uh, to come You're out? asking a whole other class, man. Come on. <laughs> um, like the under the two or spread the head? So it really depends on like how deep into this game I am. Man, if, if I can get this position, it's, it's done. Like this belt grip is too strong to beat. The best thing from like this deep position he can try to do is try to get his head back to position, his hips back to position, and make me kind of like lose the tension in the arm. Before that, it's just the normal game for him. Like uh, um, the best thing he can always try to do is try to pass to my backside. And here, especially, I'm kind of loose on his, on his hips. Like, I don't have great control when I have the sleeve and uh, collar. So his best move is to just back out and go around here. And now this starts to give me problems. Anything else? Awesome. That's it, guys. Thank you. Thank you.